I got into television through uh, working in the theatre, um, which I was not very successful at, and um, was uh, assistant director at Northampton Rep for a time, and in one or two other rep companies, and then um, applied to the BBC as an assistant floor manager and got rejected and then applied again as a director and bizarrely got accepted um, and did their training course which was six weeks including one morning entitled what to do with your cameras and it was mainly about how to fill in the correct forms to function at the BBC um, did that managed uh, then within a few weeks um, I was doing live Z cars um, um, at TV Centre where it was the the production was going out live to several million homes and it was that was a baptism by fire. The great breakthrough I had, the great stroke of luck I had was working with a group of people who were making um, what was called the Wednesday play which was contemporary drama at the BBC, contemporary fiction um, and each week we would put on uh, a play or about um, what was contemporary life, modern drama, um, and we, we had great ideals for that. That developed uh, one um, um, play, um, stroke film, that I was able to do uh, with Tony Garnett, the producer, was Nell Dunn's book called Up the Junction. And that was a bit of a breakthrough for us because it enabled us. We we found a way of making it as a film rather than as a studio play, and it transformed the the style of of working in fiction, and it became more like a film. Um, Nell's partner Jeremy Sanford um, wrote a piece called Kathy Come Home, and that was again was a significant moment for us, and. Um, because it was it was well received, um, we got an offer to do a film where I did. Um, Nell's book had written another book called Poor Cow. The producer wanted to make a film of this book, um, and so that's how Poor Cow came about. And it it, it had the same um, actress in Carol White who'd been in Kathy Come Home, and she'd also been in Up to Junction. So she was very identified with that. Um, with those um, films or plays on television, which had been had been seen as a breakthrough. Well, N Nell was writing Poor Cow really when we were doing Up the Junction and and Kathy Come Home, so I, I knew of it. She was talking about it then, and then um, I read it as soon as it was written. So I, I knew about it bef really before Joe Yanni um, asked to produce it. Adapting was very straightforward. I mean, it is it is the book essentially, um, and um, it was a question of, of finding the the moments in the book and the scenes that would string together and make a little impressionistic narrative. It's very impressionist. I mean, it's just little moments. And Love the Junction, which was Nell's other book, I mean, is is just little moments of little scenes of contemporary life. Um, based around the three main characters in Up the Junction and again based around this character of Joy and Poor Cow. And so there is a storyline but it's quite um, it's quite impressionist. It doesn't follow the conventional narrative drive, you know, it just it's more like a mosaic of little complementary scenes. Joe Yanni was a, a film producer. Obviously I'd only worked in television. Um, I'd worked with Jimmy, Mc well, good producers in television, David Rose, Jimmy McTaggart, Tony Garnett, um, and their way of working was very close to the, to the project. I mean, they understood the centre of what we were trying to do and were committed to it. Um, Joe was um, a, a cinema person, a, a film man in, in quite a traditional way. Um, and approach making films in a very traditional way, um, and I, I guess we 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 weren't necessarily on the same tracks, um, and uh, 
I, I think he was very, you know, committed to getting a good film, of course. Um, but the the traditional film producer way was to hire a, a line producer who saw every member of the crew being out to swindle the production uh, and approach them accordingly. And that didn't necessarily make for a harmonious team because as a director you want everyone pulling together and committed to the project. If they're constantly battling with what they see as the front office, then that's not a good way to work. The, the crew was um, were m as some came with us with me from television had a television background, and we were used to working in a much faster, quicker, more informal way. The traditional film crew then back in the sixties was um, was very hierarchical. Was the separate departments stayed very separate. It tended not to be cohesive. And um, so there, there was a tension both between departments and between those who came from television and those who came from the traditional film industry. And putting the two together wasn't necessarily the best way to, to get a good team going. But we got through, you know, I mean, there were good people um, everywhere. Uh, we got through. It took twice as long as it should have done. Um, but, um, well, we got there. Carol was, um, and her kids were, had been in Cathy Come Home, so I, and I knew Carol well, and she was the obvious person to play the part. And Joe was very keen for her to play it because she was well known because of Cathy Come Home. Um, the, the other casting was, you know, we, we just had to look. Um, Joe suggested, and also Nat Cohen, who was the distributor and backer, suggested uh, Town Stamp. And um, he, he was he was good. I, I enjoyed meeting him. I enjoyed working with him. He was uh, he was very loyal to the production. He was well known, and his agent, I think, was making made demands that we weren't necessarily accustomed to, like a big trailer, and that wasn't terribly useful. But um, Terry Stamp himself was was um, was really good and a, a nice guy, and we got on well. Of of all of us, he was the one who had his rep he had a reputation and a, a presence in, in films, and I didn't, and Carol didn't really. Um, so, but he was no, he was brave. He was he he just had a go, and he was committed to it, and um, he was good. I, I liked working with him. The the dialogue's mainly there in, in Nell's book, but you know you you try to make it live and and have a sense of spontaneity. So. Yeah, you throw things in and take people by surprise, and we probably there's probably more improvisation in in poor cow than than um, I ever used again. Um, but it's um, we, we when we'd finished it, we pared it down to quite close to what's in the book. The idea of little linking chapters. I mean, it, it was it was um, little cards on the screen. It was something that was quite current at the time, um, you know, in the French films of the time, um, um, I think it was something we'd used before, and uh, because it is a fragmented story, it's not a, it's, it's not a hard driven narrative, it is, it is impressionistic, it just seemed to, seemed appropriate. Carol was, was um, always terrific to work with, and, and um, very talented girl, really. Um, and very vulnerable, and made herself vulnerable, and um, she, um, she she was very present. You know, you just felt her presence very strongly. Um, good fun, easy to work with. They were all easy. To, I mean, actors are easy to work with, really. Um, if you strike up a good relationship, um, and. Uh, no, she, she, she was fine. She, we al agreed that she could do a film with Michael Winner at the same time, towards the end, and that wasn't, in the, in the retrospect, I regretted that, because um, on his film she, she was treated like a film star and given special cars and special hair do's and special this and special that, and she was very young, and that, I think, you know, maybe 
gave her a false impression of what being a film star was and she felt you know she was she, that's how you know that was the life she wanted and of course it was a mistake and and was in the end was quite destructive because on our film she was just Carol and she just mucked in with everyone else being tempted by this film star treatment was not health was not good and and it sadly it wasn't good after the film was finished um, and um, she went to America and sh she didn't have a very happy time there. Nell knew Johnny Bindon and he, he was um, he was a feature in a well-known character in Fulham, young man um, up to various kinds of mischief um, with the alleged connections to the royal family and all kinds of um, people in that world of the 60s um, and um, he certainly knew um, the, the world of small-time criminals um, in one way or another I don't quite know how um, and didn't ask um, but he had quite a checkered career afterwards and, and I think died um, some years later um, but a, a very strong presence in the film I mean, he he was that that man. I mean, he was there was a strong presence to him. He was um, he was you felt there was an air of danger around John. Um, he was brilliant with me, and you know, brilliant on the film, and very help, very always supportive of what we were doing, and um, couldn't have been better to work with. But you sense that he brought with him a hinterland that was that had a sense of danger. He had the talent to be a really good actor. Um, he certainly had the talent, but I think life intervened really. Filming around London was easy, a lot easier than it is now. I mean, you just turned up and pointed a camera and away you went, you know. It, it was a lot easier. Um, people were more innocent about filming. They, they'd, um, I think it, was, it wasn't so common. Um, the people we filmed hadn't grown up with filming taking place, so there was people were generally more enthusiastic and more accepting of a film crew. I think London was a much more attractive city in the sixties architecturally. I mean, these monster tower blocks we got now, you know, for foreign investors to come and buy flats as investment and keep them empty and disfiguring the the landscape of London. London's been wrecked by bad developments, encouraged by politicians, for greedy people to make money out of, whereas the, the, the people who live here, the Londoners, are being squeezed out. So I think London's, London's been, a lot of London has been wrecked. And the simple architecture of the um, 100 years ago, or those terraces, which, which are, obviously they needed regenerating, but, but as houses, far more substantial than living on a, you know, a high rise in a high rise block. Um, those those terraces have been um, destroyed, you know, and and shame on the people who did it, and um, and what a tragedy for Londoners. I can't remember how we met Donovan. Um, I can't remember. I mean, he, the 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 word of the song, a thing by Christopher Logue, who is um, a writer I'd worked with. And I think it was probably through Christopher who had written, written the words of the song at the beginning, which are terrific words actually, terrific words. Um, and so I think it was through him and then Donovan had said it to music. And um, yeah, he was a, I remember, he was a nice guy. Came and sang his songs. I, I had no idea whether the film would be received well or not. Um, it, it's, they sold it to America quite well and that enabled Carol to go to America, um, which I, I felt at the time was a pity, um, because I felt she would, she would be recognised and understood better here, and her talent would be protected, whereas there she was just exploited. Um, but yeah, it, it did, it did go, it did go quite well, I think. Um, but it was on, it was in, it was in in that sixties wave of. Um, the London of the time, the the songs of the time, um, the 
you know, the, the sense of life and vitality that, that there was around then. I think looking at it now, it's very much uh, the film you make as a first film. I mean, it's full of mistakes, full of, you know, little misjudgments. Some scenes go on too long, some are indulgence. Um, sometimes it just needs a stronger spine. Sometimes it could be much tougher. It's quite gentle. Um, it's quite a forgiving film in a way. Um, I think you know if I'd done it a few years later, it would have been tougher, sharper, um, and probably crisper. So I could, I'd, I'd like to get the scissors to it and take ten minutes out now. But it is what it is, you know. That that's how it was. Um, I have warm memories of everybody involved, everybody who, who was in it. Um, happy memories of them. Um, but um, it's it's very much a first film.